You've been told that improving your diet will improve your cholesterol profile. But what do you do if your cholesterol profile doesn't improve or gets worse after changing your diet? This is the experience that some people have when they follow a low-carb diet. In this video, I explain what's going on and how you can tell if you're doing your body more harm or good by cutting carbs. Hi, I'm Dr. Becky from drbeckyfitness.com. I'm a college instructor of the science of nutrition, and I want to try to simplify this incredibly complex topic of cholesterol. Now to start with, you need to know that your body needs some cholesterol. It's a part of every single cell membrane in your body, and it's an essential part of your hormones like estrogen and testosterone. So the goal is never to get your total cholesterol to zero. Now, when you get your blood tested, you usually see your total cholesterol level. This is a calculation that the lab gets by adding your HDL and LDL cholesterol levels together with 20% of your triglyceride level. Triglyceride, that's that fancy name that we give to just means fat. Um, and you might know HDL as your good cholesterol, right, and your LDLs as your bad cholesterol. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. But for now, we see that HDL and LDL, they are abbreviations, right? And their real names are high-density lipoprotein and low-density lipoprotein. So they are both lipoproteins. And if you look closely at that word, you see it's actually two words squished together, lipid plus protein, which is a nice name because a lipoprotein is, for the most part, a mixed molecule that contains both fats and protein. And this unique structure allows fat to move around that watery transport system that you call your blood. So, you know, if we think back to our childhood science classes, right, when you remember that oil and water don't mix, well, fat and blood don't mix. So fats by themselves can't move through your blood unless they have someone to carry them. And that someone is this nice, neat little uh, lipoprotein package. So the takeaway here is that the primary job of both HDL and LDL is to carry cholesterol, which is a fatty substance, and triglycerides, which are fats, through your blood, okay? So it's the direction in which these lipoproteins are carrying cholesterol that gives them the reputation of being good or bad. So let's start with HDLs. They are the housekeepers. They go out, they gather up cholesterol in your body, and then they head for the liver where they drop off their cargo. That dumped cholesterol is either recycled as one of those good things I mentioned, like making hormones or cell membranes, or it's essentially thrown away as it gets turned into bile by your liver, um, and then that helps with your digestion, and then when it's used up, it gets eliminated from your body. So just remember, HDL as healthy, right? The H is for healthy. And indeed, we want more of these. No matter what diet you're on, you always want to strive for more HDL. So we can just kind of know that and just forget about HDLs for right now and just leave them for the rest of the video. LDLs, they're the ones that we need to take a closer look at when we examine your health. LDLs work in the opposite way of HDLs. They carry cholesterol out into your body. That's not necessarily a bad thing, which we'll touch on, but for now, let's just know that they are made inside your liver. They're made up of protein, cholesterol, and triglycerides. Um, and actually, when they start their life inside your liver, they start as very low-density lipoproteins, or VLDLs. They contain some cholesterol, but they are really just packed full of triglycerides at this point. Those triglycerides, they're needed by your body cells for energy. So when the VLDL leaves your liver, it drops off its cargo um, and it's burnt off, that triglyceride is burnt off as energy. Um, and then they turn into LDLs, which have fewer triglycerides, but they still carry their cholesterol. I like Dave Feldman's analogy of LDLs as cruise ships, and so I'll, I'll link to his video from, from this video. But essentially, you want to think of LDL particle as um, a, cru a cruise ship. So the passengers on the cruise ship are your triglycerides, the, the lifeboats on the side are your cholesterol. And as the LDL ships cruise through your blood, it's always dropping off its passengers at different ports, right? It's dropping off its triglycerides. And this is actually the first time that we see the importance of a low-carb diet. Carbohydrates, they are a very easy 
fuel source for your body to convert to energy. Um, but if you're not eating a lot of them, you're on a low-carb diet, then your body needs to run on its alternative fuel, which is triglycerides. So a person on a low-carb diet is burning these passenger triglycerides for energy. What happens to a person who's eating a lot of sugar and carbs constantly throughout the day? Well, they still have these triglycerides you know, on board, but those fats are not needed for energy. So they have nowhere to go. They have to get off, dropped off somewhere. They go to your fat cells and they get stored as future energy. So when you eat sugar and white bread and those fancy frappe drinks you know, from our fast food restaurants and our cafes, you're constantly feeding your fat cells. So now let's go back to our cruise ship. So we have the, the lifeboats on the cruise ships. And on Dave Feldman's analogy, we see that those lifeboats are cholesterol molecules. Lifeboats, they kind of go along for the ride, right? So the captain of the ship could drop off uh, a lifeboat here or there if it's needed somewhere in the body. But if they're not needed, then they just return with the cruise ship back to port, which is your liver. In your liver, the entire cruise ship, along with its cholesterol, is taken out of service. And that cholesterol is recycled or it's either um, prepared for excretion. So what might cause these lifeboats to be needed by your body? In other words, what might your body need cholesterol for other than the good things that I already mentioned? Well, cholesterol is an important component in wound healing within your blood vessels. Its job is to kind of act like a band-aid. So you might be wondering what happens inside of a blood vessel, right? How do you hurt a blood vessel to the point where it needs a Band-Aid? Well, this damage typically comes from inflammation, and inflammation is largely caused by a poor diet that co contains inflammatory foods, namely sugar, refined carbs, high fructose, corn syrup, which you get in, in sodas and processed foods. Uh, we also know inflammation comes from chronically increased insulin levels and high blood pressure, but, but there again, those two things are very closely associated with a poor diet. So another takeaway, I guess, right? Don't think that because you might feel okay when you eat junk food that you're getting away with anything. You can't outrun this biological impact of a poor diet. Um, you don't feel this inflammation in your vessels, right? But it's happening. And when that inflammation causes these, these rough patches, right? Well, cholesterol rushes over to patch patch it up and this is where cholesterol gets its bad reputation because that cholesterol as it fills in well the the lumen the hole here through which blood passes gets more narrow and that is what increases your risk of cardiovascular disease but here's the thing right we're blaming the wrong culprit we're blaming the band-aid when what caused the problem in the first place? Well, it was this inflammation, okay? And what causes that? Poor diet. So yes, LDL cholesterol is carrying cholesterol out into your body, but if it's not needed, well, it stays on the cruise ship, right? And it goes right back to port, gets broken down, reused, or, or excreted as bile. Okay, so we understand some more about how LDL molecules function um, in your body. So the question becomes, well, is it okay then to, to have a super high total cholesterol or, or LDL cholesterol level in your blood? Well, probably not, but I will say that the scientific community differs a lot from the medical community on how much is too much. Uh, if you see your doctor and you have an LDL cholesterol um, of like 280 or 300 or something like that, well, he's he or she is probably going to uh, prescribe a statin to bring that down. So we need to dig a little deeper here to understand what's really going on if your LDL cholesterol level is not coming down and or, you know or it's possibly going up even though you're on a good healthy low carb low sugar diet. And we also want to take a look at how to tell if that LDL level is dangerous or harmless. So I already mentioned that low-carb diets are very good at shrinking your fat cells, right, because they encourage the release of fat. But what exactly is coming out of a fat cell as it shrinks? Well, we know that triglycerides come out, right, because that's the fat it's, itself. But what we don't always think about is as, as that fat cell is shrinking, cholesterol is coming out. 
So when you're losing weight, you're releasing low-density lipoprotein cholesterol into your bloodstream. And remember that triglyceride, that's energy, right? So that can be burned off. Cholesterol does not get burned. So it has to make its way through your blood and get to the liver where it can be dealt with. So while it doesn't happen to everyone, it's not unusual to see elevated total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol when you're on a rapid fat loss diet like a low carb diet. Um, especially if you're someone who has an underlying issue like insulin resistance or diabetes. Now, this elevated cholesterol finding by itself is not a reason to panic. Uh, first of all, uh, your level could naturally come down once you reach your goal rate, weight, right? Because these fat cells stop shrinking, so therefore they stop releasing their cholesterol. Um, and secondly, it's important to know that not all LDL particles are the artery-clogging kind. So to really tell if your elevated LDL finding is dangerous, you need a different blood test that goes beyond the standard lipid panel to look at the size of your LDL particles. That blood test is called an NMR lipoprofile or nu uh, nuclear mag magnetic resonance lipoprofile. It's a blood test that reveals the LDL particles size. Um, you know, years ago, science didn't know that there were different kinds of LDLs. Some are, are big and light and fluffy, and some are small and dense. The big fluffy ones are the safe ones. The small dense ones are the artery uh, damaging particles. Uh, what causes this? Well, genetics might play a role, but um, your diet definitely plays an important role in the size of your LDL particles. A diet low in carbs seems to increase the particle size, which is what you want. Uh, there's also some evidence that the type of fat you include in your diet uh, affects the size of the LDL particles. Unhealthy fats, like the ones I mentioned, trans fats, hydro hydrogenated oils, vegetable oils, they cause these small bad LDLs. Healthy fats, your avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut oil, uh, wild-caught fish, uh, these give you the, the good fluffy ones, right? So it always circles back to diet. Um, you know, there's really nothing you can do for your health better than changing your diet. So let me recap this video with a list of what to do if you find that your total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol is staying elevated even though you're eating a healthy, low-carb diet. First of all, don't panic. Uh, as you move closer to your goal weight, your fat cells stop shrinking, and that m means that they're going to be releasing less of this cholesterol into your bloodstream. Um, this may allow your cholesterol levels to, to just naturally normalize. Second, have an NMR lipoprofile test. This is a more precise test that looks at your um, size of your LDL particles. You want those s small uh, artery clogging ones to be low, right, and you want the number of the big fluffy ones to be high. Next, look at your C-reactive protein levels. This is part of most routine blood cholesterol tests. It's a marker that shows the level of inflammation in your body. Low inflammation means less damage to your blood vessels and less of a need of, of uh, you know, for cholesterol to, to be a band-aid, right? Fourth, make sure that your diet contains plenty of healthy fats, those avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut oil, the fatty fish, and other omega-3 fatty acids, and, and avoid those unhealthy fats that we were talking about. Right? And then um, also when you eat carbohydrates, make sure they have a high fiber-to-carb ratio. Uh, your low glycemic vegetables, the ones that we think of as putting on, um, on uh, our salads, our leafy greens, cucumbers, uh, mushrooms, onions, peppers, tomatoes, these are going to be among your best choices. And lastly, uh, avoid sugar, avoid refined carbs, avoid these high fructose corn syrups. These foods, they just turn on the cholesterol making factory in your liver and they pump out these small dangerous LDL particles. All right, I hope this has helped you better understand cholesterol and your diet. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please share it and uh, make sure that you also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll be back soon with some more information to help you improve your health and lose weight. Thanks.